Welcome once again to the Full Gospel Evangelism Television Broadcast brought to you for a ministry called Full Gospel Evangelism. We at Full Gospel Evangelism believe that the Bible is the Word of God and everything we believe is based on the Holy Scriptures. We believe that Jesus is still healing, is still delivering, is still saving and he's still working miracles today and if you have a need in your life there's a telephone number on your screen now that you can call us on I'll be waiting to receive your call you can add me to WhatsApp it might be cheaper to call me that way if you're in other countries because I'm in the United Kingdom and wherever you are you may be a different country different culture different weather but I've got news for you. My Jesus is the same in Nigeria, he's the same in Ghana, he's the same all over Europe. He does not change. What he was, he is, and what he is, he will be. My God speaks every language and he is able to answer every prayer. We serve a what great big wonderful God. Today I'm going to go into a subject that I spoke on before but I want to speak on it again. It's called the unreliable Christian. The unreliable Christian. Let me give you two verses of scripture. One is in Proverbs 25.19. In fact they're both from Proverbs 25.19. But one is from the King James Bible and the other is from the Good News Bible. Now I'm going to read first of all from the King James Bible. It says confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. Now that same verse in the Good News Bible reads this way. Depending on an, an unreliable person in a crisis is like trying to chew with a loose teeth or walk with a crippled foot. I'm speaking on the subject the unreliable Christian because in my many years of ministry I have seen over and over again churches that have been let down by members that were not reliable, not trustworthy, not dependable. They may have had great talent, in fact the unreliable Christian may not be an evil, wicked, nasty person. Oftentimes they are the most loving person that you would ever meet. They may have many gifts. They might be able to sing well, preach well, play the piano, play the keyboard well, play the trumpet well. They may be good at what they can do. But you see, they never get a chance to use their gift to their full potential because they are unreliable. You cannot trust them. You invite them to go and play a keyboard in your meeting. They say they're going to be there. They don't turn up. They're unreliable. They can play it well. But they're unreliable. And unreliable people are hindering their own ministry. They're hindering their own future. But they are hindering everybody else as well. And I pray that God will challenge us in this internet broadcast to be more reliable. Because unreliable Christians are often very generous and have many great gifts, it is hard really to rebuke them. I remember many years ago when I started off in the ministry, I held a meeting in Lewisham. I came across a wonderful, two wonderful Jamaican women. They lived together in the same house. They were wonderful, generous. When I went there, they always cooked me a meal. They were most loving. They donated to the ministry. Wonderful, caring, loving people. The problem was, was one, that they were unreliable. When they say they're going to get to a meeting, sometimes they didn't turn up or they came there almost as it was about to finish. The very unreliable people. I remember a good friend of mine called Pastor Price who's now gone to be with the Lord. 
He invited those sisters to come on a missionary trip to Holland. In knowing they were unreliable, he made them stay at his house overnight. But during the day, they got up, they everything slowly, they cooked the meal slowly. When they should have been leaving, they were still in their, they were still in their night clothes. They got finally got chased. They got there and they they missed the aeroplane. And other people was upset. You see, they were unreliable, and unreliable people hurt everybody. Wonderful people, kind-hearted people, caring people, but you just could not depend upon them. Many churches have been let down because they've organised a big meeting, and suddenly the choir leader doesn't turn up, or the ushers that should be there on time get there late, and people there's confusion in the meeting. Sometimes the keyboard player doesn't turn up. I remember speaking to a friend of mine only a few weeks ago. She got a wonderful singing voice. She went to the meeting, but the backup group didn't turn up, which really made it hard for her to sing. Unreliable people can cause a lot of pain. They can cause a lot of hurt. They can cause a lot of upset. They don't, they don't intend to, they don't mean to, but often that is the case. And I, if you're an unreliable person watching this today, I pray that you will be challenged by some of the things that we are going to say in this broadcast. Yes, I preached this message yesterday, but I want to preach it again today because it is so important that we get this message over. Friends, you can speak in tongues 24 hours a day. You can fast for 40 days. You can do all those things, but if you're unreliable, you will never succeed. You will never get anywhere. I know a friend of mine who's got the same name as me called David. He is a builder. He's done much work in my house. He is good at what he does. The problem is, he's unreliable. When he does a job, he does it perfectly. But it takes him so long to do it. A four-day job can take a month. And I find myself getting very annoyed with him because he tells me he's going to come next day. He doesn't turn up. I end up waiting in all day when I could be doing other things. Sometimes he doesn't phone to say that he's, he's not going to be there. Other times he phones that I can't make it today. I'll come tomorrow, but tomorrow he doesn't come. He's a good builder. He does a good job. But if you want a job done quickly, don't call upon him because he can go on for months. It's, he could be a rich man. He could own his own house. He could get plenty of work. But he doesn't. He's living in rented accommodation. He's having trouble paying the rent. Why? Not because he's not good at what he does, he is good at what he does. He's an excellent builder, but he's unreliable. If he was more reliable and get one job finished, then he could go on to another job and go on to another job and go on to another job. He could have plenty of money by now. He could probably have two or three houses. That's how good he is. But the reason he doesn't succeed is because he is not reliable. God wants us to be reliable. If you're watching this, please share this on your timeline. Please share it. We want to get this out to as many people as possible because the message that I'm preaching today, if people can get a hold of it, they will go from success to, to success. They will go from victory to victory. The unreliable person causes problems. They don't intend to cause problems. But they do cause problems. I've had pastors that say, Pastor McKivitt, I want to see you. They make an appointment. They set a time to come to my house. And so I make sure that time is clear so that when they come, I've got time for them. But I've had them, they don't turn up on time. Sometimes they don't even turn up at all. They don't phone me to tell me they're going to be late. They don't phone me to let me know they're not coming. And when I phone them, oftentimes I can't get through to them. And so I'm left in all day long, which is wasting my life. 
and it is wasting minutes time that I could be spent on counselling and ministering and proclaiming the gospel. They take my... I wait. Now, if someone keeps me waiting, that t does that all the time, then I have to say to them, when they phone me up and say, can I make an appointment to see you? I have to say to them, well, I'm not going to make an appointment now. Phone me on that day when you're ready to leave and see if I'm available. And then I'll book them a time. If they don't turn up at that time, I've gone. I don't hang around no more, I've gone. If I make an appointment to see them at 10 o'clock, and by 11 o'clock they're not there, that's their problem. If I'm in, I will see them. But if I'm... If I have to go somewhere, I've got, I'm going to go there. So it's up to them from now on. I can't keep hanging around for unreliable people. It holds back my ministry. It holds back and it affects somebody else as well. I've heard of people who've had their weddings ruined because the wedding dress that should have been made on time, that was promised to be made on time, was not made on time time and they had to struggle to get a wedding dress i've known people will organize a wedding and all of a sudden the one that does the decorations doesn't turn up the drivers don't turn up and that is sad it destroys somebody's wedding now of course in that situation you can sue them you've got the right to sue them for breach of contract they promised to make that wedding dress they didn't make them you can sue them but that is not going to make your day any better because you only get one wedding day. And no matter how much money they pay you, it's not going to make up for the day that they have ruined because they were unreliable. Friends, when you go, when you use a firm, make inquiries. See how reliable they are. Read about them. See if there's any complaints about them. And look into them. In fact, friends, let me tell you, I would rather somebody say no and then I can get someone else. But when they say yes and don't do it, that's a problem. If they say no, I can't sing at your church. No, I can't play the keyboard. I know where I am. I then can get somebody else in. But when they tell me yes and don't turn up, I can't do anything. If you can't finish the working time, let me know when you start it. If you're not coming to my house, phone me and let me know so that I can give someone else that time. It is better to say no because then that person can make alternative all, um, arrangements. But sometimes they leave it too late and you, it's difficult to make alternative arrangements. I remember a few years ago I was invited to preach in Holland. I asked one of the pastors if he could take me to the airport, I was going to pay him. If he could pick me up and take me to the airport, he said yes, he would. But he didn't turn up. I waited and waited, he didn't turn up. And when I saw it was near the time, I phoned him, I couldn't get him. And in the end, I had to get a cab and take me to the airport and just got there on time. That pastor didn't even phone up to apologise. He didn't, he phoned up my wife. I said to my wife, did, did, did you get any calls after I went? No. No selfishness and totally unreliable. When I spoke to him afterwards, he came up with some silly excuse that he left my phone, he left his mobile phone in the office with my address on it when he could have gone to the office and picked up the mobile phone, but it's a poor excuse because all he's got to do is get on Facebook, and I'm on his Facebook account, and go on YouTube and see my YouTube videos, and they've all got my telephone number on there. So that is a poor excuse. You see, rather than say no, he said yes, knowing he wasn't going to do it. Now, what kind of example is that pastor setting for his congregation? If he's doing it to me, he must be doing it to other people. I once spoke to a printer, not a Christian printer. I took some leaflets there to get done for a meeting and I saw all these other, me all these other leaflets 
And um, I said to him, you get a lot of work from the church? He said, yeah. He said, but I very, I don't like doing work for churches. I said, why not? He said, because you cannot rely on them. Sometimes they, they do the printing and then they cancel a meeting and they don't turn up for the flyers. They don't think they've got to pay for it anymore. And I said, so now we make them pay beforehand. If they're Christians, I make them pay before, and that way I know I'm going to get the money. If they don't turn up, I haven't made a loss. So I went to, I said, okay, well, I'll pay you for my meeting. She said, no, Pastor McKivitt, you haven't got to pay. You are always reliable. You always come and pick them up, and you always pay your money. I'm not going to ask you to pay before, then. But all the other churches, he made them pay. Isn't it a sad reflection on the church that, an unsaved person who we should be witnessing to, who we should be letting our light so shine before them, turn out to be unreliable. Isn't it a sad reflection for an employer who in, implies a Christian and that Christian is more unreliable than the non-Christians? They don't turn up on time. They finish early. They say they're going to do something and don't do it. That is a sad reflection on the church we need as God's people to be reliable I've had people I phoned up people at times and I said and they say the pastor McKibbit, I can't talk now I'm in a meeting as soon as the meeting's finished I call you well it must be a long meeting because six days later I still haven't heard from him and I phone them again and they tell me the same thing sometimes I refer to them I say oh yes I'm very, very sorry. No, they're not sorry. It's a habit. You know, whenever I say to somebody, I'm going to phone them back, I always do. Occasionally I forget. That's, that's not intentional. But most of the time I do. There are some bishops that I know that like I just love them because when they say they're going to phone me back, they always do. I think of Bishop Goodwin, I think of Dr. Albert Chambers and many others. Men that you can rely on. If they say they're going to do something, they do them. Sometimes they phone them up, they say, I'm driving, I can't talk now. And they phone, and, but they always call me back. And I do the same. Sometimes I can't talk to people. Sometimes they phone me up and I'm busy, I'm doing something. And I said, but I can't talk now, I'll get back to you. And I always do. Now, sometimes I do forget, but that's unintentional. There's a difference between accidentally forgetting and being unreliable. Some people, their way of life is totally unreliable in everything that they do. And it destroys marriages. How sad it is when a husband says, I'm going to come home, I'm going to pick you up, and we go shopping together. And then he goes round his friend's house and he doesn't turn up to meet his wife. Isn't it sad? Isn't it sad? A little while ago, I thought this man is really bad. Now, he wasn't... Well, he claims to be a Christian. But his lifestyle doesn't show that he is a Christian. And one day, he, he arranged to pick up his wife and take her home. But he didn't turn up and that wife had to struggle on public transport with her three children because the man didn't turn up and didn't even phone to say, I tell you friends, you need to be reliable as a husband. You need to be reliable as a wife. You need to be reliable as a pastor. You need to set an example. It's no good you as a pastor telling people, oh, you should get to church on time. But you yourself always turn up late. That is a sad reflection. Now, I'm not talking about a pastor that turns up early and is in the office doing things. That's different. But you should be there on time because we need to set, we need to lead by examples. A good pastor is a shepherd. And a good shepherd does not command his sheep where to go. They follow him. The sheep follow him. That means they follow where he's going. They follow his example. They follow his character. They follow his example. And if you're unreliable, what example are, are you? And if your children see you unreliable, if your children hear you make promises to people that you don't do, what example are you setting for your children? 
we should let our light so shine before men that and our children and our family and our church that they may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. Now, let me explain this. A person is not unreliable if genuine circumstances make it impossible to fulfil their promise. There are situations that happen and they happen to all of us and they cannot be helped and that does not mean they are unreliable. I remember when my wife and I got married in 1979, somebody said they were going to supply the car, they had a lovely car and they were going to come pick us up and take us to the church. They didn't turn up, we waited, they didn't turn up. In the end we got someone else to come and pick them up. We heard afterwards that car was involved in an accident. They couldn't make it. Now, they were not unreliable, they tried to get there, they were on their way there, but they had an accident. It could not be helped. That does not make them unreliable. I remember once my nephew on my wife's side was coming to England, come, coming from Barbados to England, and I promised to pick them up at the airport. My wife and I got in the car at good time, we were on our way to the airport and suddenly the car started to overheat. There was steam coming from the car. We had to pull in and wait for the um, RAC to come and fix us and I couldn't get to the airport. Now that does not make me unreliable. It's not my fault the car broke down. There are things in our life that happen that are not our fault. But sometimes they are our fault when we say we're going to do something, but we're not sure if we're going to do it. It's best to say, I'm not sure I'm going to do it. I don't know. I've got too much work. I cannot do it. That makes you unreliable. But having something happens that is beyond our, beyond our ability, unforeseen circumstances, then that does not make us unreliable. My... My father was a wonderful builder and he said to me, I'm going to build your porch and it needed doing. And he, was go and he would have done it, but he was taken ill when he died. Circumstances made it impossible for him to do it. Now I'm not going to say my father was unreliable, he didn't intend to die. I didn't intend for my car to break down the way to the airport. These things happen. Sometimes you accidentally oversleep. You forget to set the alarm. But most of the time people say they like, overstep. They didn't. It's just an excuse. But there are genuine cases. And when there are genuine circumstances that stop us from fulfilling our promise, we have to be understanding. That does not make the person feel unreliable. But I want to take a look quickly now at the character of the unreliable person. The character of the unreliable person. One, they are liars. They're liars. There's no doubt about it. They are liars. When someone says they're going to do something, knowing fine well they've got no intention of doing it, that makes them a liar. A big liar. In Re and in Revelation 21, 8, it says, But the fearful, and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and oremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is a second death. If you say you're going to play the keyboard at the church and you don't turn up, you're a liar. If you say you're going to attend choir practice and don't turn up, and there's no good reason for not doing so, you are a liar. And it's a disgrace. A disgrace if you call yourself a Christian. If you call yourself a man or woman of God, it, it, it is a disgrace. And if you are unreliable and don't keep your word, don't you dare call yourself a Christian. You are a disgrace if that's the way that you act. The unreliable person, they are inconsiderate. They don't think about anybody else. 
They got a, someone else is relying on them, but they prefer to lay in bed. They miss an appointment because they want to do something else and leave someone else waiting. They don't care about anybody else. They promise to help you out in the wedding. They don't turn up, they're inconsiderate. They don't think about anybody else. They are utter selfish and selfish not, is not a Christian. And if you are moving and your attitude and your general lifestyle is one of unreliability, then let me tell you, friends, you are, the, you are an inconsiderate person. A wife, a wife that doesn't keep her word. A husband that doesn't keep her word. A Christian that don't keep their word. They are inconsiderate and a disgrace to the church. Disgrace. Someone says they're going to come along and sing and they don't turn up to the church. They let that church down. They let the pastor down. They, can, they let the whole church down. They're letting God down. Just inconsiderate because they decided they want you to go here or they want you to do there. I remember hearing about a preacher once that was invited to a church but he didn't turn up. Didn't say anything, just didn't turn up. And the reason he didn't turn up was because on the day that he was due to be there, a, a large church with bigger a congregation invited him. So he let down the small church. I tell you, friends, you that kind of person, you are a disgrace. You are inconsistent and disgrace. And, of course, an unreliable person cannot be trusted. They cannot be trusted. If somebody has got a reputation of being unreliable, don't you ever trust them. Don't you ever trust them. Man, if they won't turn up on time to do something, don't trust them to mind your children when, when you when you go going away because they probably won't turn up. Somebody told me many years ago, and if I can get this truth into, into your heart, treat people as they are and not the way you want them to be. Deal with people as they are. If you know somebody who is always gossiping, treat them like a gossip monger. Don't tell them any of your business. Keep it. And if you know somebody is a thief, you treat them like a thief. You don't let them in your house and you don't let them out of your sight. And if, you, if they do have to come around your house, you make sure you lock all the money away. And if a person is a liar and doesn't keep their word, then what you do is, if you lend them any money, which you shouldn't do if I'm reliable, but you do lend them money, make sure they sign a bit of paper. Make sure they, and make sure they sign it over to pay at a certain time. You treat a thief like a thief. You treat a gossip manga like, you treat a liar like a liar. How do you treat a liar? You listen to everything they say and believe nothing. And that's how you treat an unreliable person. You don't rely on them. There are some people that have got good talent. Man, they can sing well. They play the keyboard well. They're great preachers. But you can't put them on the program because you can't rely on them. There are some people like that in the church. If they're there on that day, you can call them to sing a song. But you can't put them on the program because they might let you down. That's how you treat somebody who is unreliable. You deal with them with their. And if they say, I'll come back to Malt and finish it, don't even trust them. You know that unreliable, get someone else. That's how you treat an unreliable person. You see, friends, I've said it before and I say it again. Christians should be the most reliable people on earth. And I'll admit, I've let a few people down and this message convicted, convicted me and I hope it convicts you because we should be more like Jesus. Christians should be the most reliable people, the most trustworthy, the most honest people because we are the children of the living God. And my God always keeps his word. When God says he's going to do something, he does it. When God says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, he does it. When God, when God says one thing, he, he means it. God doesn't say one thing and do another. If God blesses you, he blesses you. He doesn't take that blessing away. You can trust the word of God. Our Heavenly Father always keeps his word. And when we are in Christ, we'll always keep our word. Because we are not liars. We say what we mean and mean what we say. 
because we are in Christ and in Christ there is no lie Jesus is the way the truth the truth and the life he is the truth and when we are in Christ our words will be true if they say we're going to do something we will do it unless circumstances that are beyond our control stop us but if we're able to keep our word we are keep our word you might want to lay in bed but you promise to be somewhere you're going to keep your word because you're a child of the living God and you will consider others more important than your sleep and it's important that we learn to keep our words you know why because we're going to be judged by our words we're going to be judged by our words Matthew 12 36 but I say unto you that every idle word that a man shall speak they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment we're going to have to give an account for every idle word and if you say you're going to do something and you don't do it that's idle words if you make a promise and you don't keep that promise it's just idle words, they don't mean anything. And if you say something, knowing you're not going to do it, they're not only idle words, you're an outright filthy, dirty, stinking liar. There's no other way to look at it. God wants us to be honest. In Matthew 12, 37, For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. No wonder Jesus said in Matthew 5, 37, that let your communications be yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these come of evil. Let your conversation be yea, yea. In other words, if I say you're going to do it, do it. Mean what you say and say what you mean and let people know that you are a man, that you are a woman that can be trusted. Don't call yourself a man of God if you don't keep your word. Don't call yourself a woman of God if you don't keep your word. In fact, if, you don't, if you're unreliable, don't tell people you're a Christian because you're an embarrassment to the church. If you're unreliable, you hurt people when you are unreliable. And God wants us to be a reliable people. No one that James says in James 5, Verse 12, it said, Above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by earth, neither by any other oath. Now, is there any other oath but that your yea be yea and your nay be nay? It's, no, it's, when you promise to do something, you're making an oath. When you tell someone you're going to help them, you're going to drive them to the airport, you're going to be at the church, you're going to meet them at a certain time, and you don't keep your word, and there is no good reason to stop you, then you have made a bad oath. And the, the Bible said that we should not make it, we should not swear, neither by heaven nor by earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. Christians should be people that say they're going to do it and not going to do it. I've got a friend of mine, she's a wonderful gospel singer, great gospel singer, and I just love, I love her. And you know, when I ask her if she can come and sing in the meetings, and she tells me, no, she can't make it, she got somewhere else, she can't make it. And I love her for that, because when she says yes, she always turns up, and when she knows she can't, she says no. I love those kind of people. I love those kind of people. There are some people that say yes, even when they can't do it, they don't want to hurt somebody. But the trouble is you are hurting, you're causing more hurt. If you can't do it, say no. I'll say you're not sure. Say it's best to get someone else because I'm not certain if I can do it. But I love people that when I say to them, can you do it? They say yes or they say no. And if they say yes, they do it. I love those kind of people. They make life easier for me. But when people are unreliable, they cause people a lot of pain. They cause people a lot of upset. They cause people a lot of hurt. I have seen people crying in tears because someone let them down because they, a friend that was going to take them to the airport didn't turn up. 
somebody that was going to pick the pick up the bride didn't turn up and there's no good reason for it someone who said they're going to mind the children when they go for an interview they don't turn up and therefore they can't go for the interview they cause a lot of pain they cause a lot of upset if you are unreliable friends you are really just a vessel of satan if you live your life saying you're going to do things and don't do them and are always unreliable you are a servant you're just serving the devil. Now I'm not saying you're going to go to hell, I'm not saying you're not a Christian, but you're not truly serving God that way because when my God says you're going to do something, he does it. And God expects his people to walk in truth and honesty. And if you have lived a life of unreliability, now's the time, this day, to say, Pastor McKivitt, I've been challenged. I know what you're saying is right. And from now on, I'm going to do what I say, I'm going to say what I do, I'm going to mean what I say, and I'm going to say what I mean. And I'm going to do it, I'm going to be honest with people. And if you've done that, why don't you just pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, Lord, there are times when all of us have not kept our word, when we were perfectly able to do so. And we pray, God, that you will forgive us for the sin of unreliability. Forgive us for the hurt and the pain that we have caused other people by not being reliable. And I pray, God, Lord, today we commit ourselves into your hands. And I pray, God, Lord, that you will grant us the grace to say yes when we're going to do it and no when we're not going to do it. And help us, Lord, to keep our word and to consider other people. Hallelujah. Praise God. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, Jesus said by this, shall all men know you are my disciples. If you have loved one for another, if you love your husband, you won't let him down. If you love your wife, you won't let her down. If you love your church, you won't let them down. If you love your brother and sister in Christ, you won't let them down. But if you are unreliable and don't keep your word, that's not love. That is not true love. Christians do not walk around making problems. Christians should be problem solvers, not problem makers well i hope this message has blessed you and, ch and challenged you there's a telephone number on your screen now you can phone me at any time whatsapp me with, with your prayer request my wife and i along with others we pray over every prayer request that we get because you are important to us i thank god for all my facebook family all my youtube family all my WhatsApp family, I love every one of you and I desire to help you grow in the name of Jesus. And may we all grow together. Well, we come to the end of this message. I'm about to play our theme music that we play as we exit. And friends, until we meet again, this is Pastor David McKivitt saying unto you, that no matter what the problem may be, Jesus is the answer. God bless you.